Okay, these videos are going to be fun here because we're going to be moving beyond basic Docker of how to create a container, how to create an image and run a container. And we're going to be talking about high availability and really scaling a production app with Docker. And that involves several new pieces of technology, uh, but it's really, it's pretty simple. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It takes a while to really wrap your head around it, but once you do wrap your head around it, it's pretty simple and a lot of fun. So here's what we're going to be building, and I'll give you this link. And I'll give you a link to the gist where I have all the code that I'm going to be using here as well, which is pretty much copy and paste code. Uh, but we're going to be creating a CoreOS cluster. So CoreOS is our operating system that we're going to use instead of, say, Ubuntu Linux. Uh, CoreOS is Linux, and we're going to run four CoreOS machines that are going to cluster together and kind of act like one machine in a lot of ways. And then we're going to start running Docker containers on this cluster. So we're going to run web app one, and that'll get assigned to a machine. And then we're going to run a copy of that web app two. That'll get assigned to another machine. And then we're going to say run nginx to load balance between the two. Uh, and then we'll maybe even run a second nginx. So that way, in case this one fails over, we've got a second nginx that automatically load balances between the two. So multiple levels of failover here. And then, just to make it really cool, we're going to put a public-facing Nginx proxy in front of them that automatically creates subdomains for these services. So say uh, we want to be access, able to access this at someapp.mywebsite.com. Well, these app, this Nginx instance will automatically register that a subdomain needs to be created to load balance between those two copies of Nginx. If I haven't confused you already, you're in for a great time. Uh, here's those links, and let's go ahead and get into it. First part, which we're going to cover in this video, is what is a CoreOS cluster, and how do I start this thing up? Uh, so we're going to do it with DigitalOcean. It's very simple. Here's pretty much a visual of what CoreOS is. So again, it's a Linux operating system. It basically boots up to Docker. doesn't really run a lot of services. And the other big thing that they did, so imagine all these blue boxes are capacity to run Docker containers. Um, and then the other thing they did is they took the configuration part out of the operating system. So that ETC folder, that Etsy folder, um, really doesn't exist. Instead, there's a service called a service called etsyd that they all share. Uh, and so instead of looking for all the configuration, it looks to the etcd service. They're all going to look to the exact same service, uh, and all your configuration for all your apps and everything lives in here instead. So whether you run a, you know, a copy of Web1 here, 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 or here, it knows how to look to etcd and find out where all the databases are that it should talk to. So that's very cool. Uh, it also means that your configuration for each computer is really, really light. Uh, here's a cloud config YAML. This is all you need to create a CoreOS machine is a cloud config YAML. Um, and this is as complicated as it gets. Uh, really, the minimum you need is you need to tell it how to access etcd, which is this chunk right here. And then we're also going to be running a few other services. We're going to be running etcd when it starts. We're going to be running Fleet when it starts, which is what we're going to use to schedule out all of our Docker containers. Uh, and we'll get into that later. And we're also going to be running Flannel, which is what helps Docker containers, Docker containers discover each other and talk to each other. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. To get started, you basically you need your cloud config file. And you can copy and paste this one. This is the one in the gist. The only thing you need to do is change this discovery URL to be your discovery URL. And by your, you just copy this URL right here, and this will generate one. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and do this, and it's going to be size equal three. And you see, every time I refresh, it creates a new URL for me. So I'm just going to snatch that URL. I'm going to paste it in. And now here's my cloud config file. So every CoreOS machine I create gets this cloud config file. I'm going to go to DigitalOcean, which is a very easy way to do this. I'm going to create my first droplet. Call it CoreOS 1. Pick CoreOS. It's going to be, let's pick the stable version. You want to enable private networking because these, these guys need to be able to talk to each other. You're going to click on user data and you're going to paste in that cloud config. And it's very important that you have this comment right here. There we go. That's all I need. I'm going to give it one of my SSH keys so I can SSH in. And it's booting up CoreOS Machine 1. Now let's go ahead and create CoreOS 2. Now, if you haven't used DigitalOcean before, I, it's really my favorite um, cloud provider. Um, I'll put a link for $10 of free, um, I guess, credit 
Uh, I, you can do these referral things with DigitalOcean where you get you can give away ten dollars of free credit. If you use that, I get twenty five dollars of free credit, but no worries, you don't have to use it. Um, oh, make sure I spell it right. I have plenty of credit as it is right now. So, so here's a third CoreOS machine, and we'll run a fourth one and then be done. So I'm starting up four machines right now. They'll all take a, roughly a minute to start. CoreOS 4. Pick stable. Give it the cloud config. Give it my SSH key. And we're good. Okay. So these are all creating right now. Uh, and so now, remember this discover URL I generated? The one that's in my cloud config? I can copy that out. And I can actually look at this, and you'll see that now machines are starting to show up. They're starting to register themselves to the cluster. I'm going to keep refreshing here real quick. I should see a second and a third appear here soon. And you also notice that this is a private IP address. This is an in-house DigitalOcean private IP address. So even if someone were to somehow maliciously access this URL here, they can't really do anything malicious with it because they don't have access to these IP addresses. Only your CoreOS clusters can do this. Only your CoreOS uh, nodes can do this on your DigitalOcean machine. So I should see three of these register, but not the fourth. Uh, and that's because when I generated my discovery token here, I gave it a size equals three, which means the first three that register are all going to run etcd. Any ones after that are not going to actually run etcd. Uh, they're going to reference the existing etcd. And the reason is, is well, it's like a clustering. We don't need 100 machines running etcd for failover. We really only need three to five machines running etcd for failover. And you do always want that to be a, um, an odd number, 357. And you really don't need more than 3579 most of the time. So here's kind of, here's the two ways you'll go about running CoreOS in production. You'll either run this way, which is I'm going to run, say, five no a five-node cluster, and all five are going to run etcd. And they're also going to, so they're going to be running etcd for failover. So if this machine goes down, um, etcd still has all of its existing you know, information. Uh, and then also all five of these machines are going to run my Docker applications. So that's kind of your smaller way of doing it in production. Your bigger way of doing it in production is to run five dedicated etcd machines in your cluster and then all the other ones in your cluster um, do not run etcd at all they are just your workers and so really your procedure for spinning this up is about the same as what we just did your cloud config just looks slightly different for this guy it says only run etcd and your cloud config for these guys says we're not going to run etcd we're just gonna you know talk to it so that's basically all you need to know about etcd coreos they're running right now i've got three copies of etcd going and now i can ssh into any one of these machines let's go ahead and check it out um, and i'm going to go ssh core at core is the default user that uh, digitalocean uses i gave it my ssh key if you remember when i created the machines i gave it one of my ssh keys so i can automatically ssh in any box um, and then i have docker running so I can do Docker PS, nothing's running. And then I can also look at etcd, etcd, etcd control. I can list that. I can see all the keys. So right now there's just kind of some configuration information that they're all sharing right now. This will look identical on any one of my four machines. And then I also have access to fleet. If you remember in my cloud config, I told it we also want to run fleet and flannel. So I can also run fleet control, list machines. And there you go, I see all four machines, not just the three that are running etcd. So all four of these machines are wired up to Fleet, and I can now use Fleet to run services. Let's get into that in the next video.